All right, we welcome you back to the Vicki Kazee Hollifield Softball Complex. Game two about to get underway between Carson Newman and Catawba after the Eagles prevailed on a walk-off error in game number one. Riley Gaddis takes to the circle for the Eagles. Freshman hurler is 6-3 and three with a 3-3-5 ERA, 12th appearance. All of them starts. Opponents hitting 267 off of her. We are underway a touch ahead of schedule at 3.40 p.m. And Carter leads things off for Catawba after a one-for-three game in game one with a two-RBI double to her name. Gaddis fires upstairs for a ball to begin the at-bat at one and oh. Carson Newman going for the sweep of the Indians. Eagles have won four straight in the series after sweeping last season's doubleheader, the 1-0. Off the plate away for a ball, and it's 2-0. That would be interesting how Carson Newman handles its pitching here in game two. The Eagles needed to use three pitchers to get the job done in game number one, the 2-0. Right down Broadway for a strike, 2-1. Sierra Rogers started and went in inning, gave up a run and two hits with two walks and a hit batter. Sykes, four innings of work, gave up two home runs off of seven hits and three runs scored. And Nico Ferguson gets the win with the final two innings of work. The two one pitch. Gaddis slides by on the outside edge for a strike. It's two and one. Couple defensive changes for Carson Newman. Macaulay Bailey is catching. Game number two for Carson Newman. Her first time as a member of the battery since February 22nd at Mars, Mars Hill when she caught game two. And Bailey calls for time to head out to chat with Riley Gaddis. I think those two had their signals crossed up potentially, which would be easy to see why that could happen given Gaddis is pitching or starting in her first game two in some time. And Bailey's starting behind the plate for the first time in three weeks. Two and two, and Gaddis deals. Off the plate away with a curve ball to load the count at three and two. So Bailey's behind the plate. Infield's the same. Matazowski, Die, Holt, and Hughes. Third to first. The payoff pitch. Swung on, line through the hole at second. That rolls all the way to the wall. Vandergrift scoops it up off the base of the wall as Carter motors into second. She's got a leadoff double. And Catawba in business here in the top of the first inning. So Carter wins that battle. Doubling off the sixth pitch of the at-bat. That brings up the catcher, Christina Brendel. She's hitless in game one and 0 for four day. First pitch, down and away for a ball. It's 1-0. The 1-0. Misses down for a ball, 2-0. Second straight batter, Riley Gaddis has started off in a 2-0 count. Not what you typically see out of the freshman from Southside, Alabama. She's been pretty pitch efficient this year and working ahead in counts. The 2-0. On the outside edge for a strike, it's 2-1. and one. Two and one, Gaddis pitches. Take it on the inner half for a strike. Battles back to even the count at two and two. Carter stands on second after her leadoff double. Gaddis. Turns and pitches. The 2-2 two -two is a changeup. Bounced back to the circle. Gaddis fields, throws the first to Hughes covering for the out, but it's productive for Brendel. 
doesn't go down as a sacrifice, but it certainly functions as one as Carter moves over to third base. And now an out can score the go-ahead run for Catala here in the top of the first with no score. Brings up Riley Tucker. Tucker tied with Sienna Cameron for the best batting average in the sack. 4-9-3, both of them enter today. And she takes low for a ball, 1-0. Oh. Tucker, one for four in game one. The lone hit was a big blast, though. Gaddis, the 1-0. Oh. Swung on. Tucker cranks it down the right field line, but it is foul. Well, Tucker gave that a ride. But the lefty was early, and it's a noisy strike one. And so far this season, Riley Gaddis hasn't been an overpowering pitcher. Doesn't have crazy strikeout numbers, just 24 on the season, but she pitches so well to contact. The 1-1. One, one. Tucker will loop into center field. Cameron got an odd read on it. She races forward, makes the grab, throws home. Bailey up the line, gets it, and applies the tag. Inning over. Sienna Cameron doubles up Carter and Tucker with a seed from center field. Now that misread by Cameron might have been helpful. She was able to race forward, catch it on the run, plant and throw in one motion. And she had Carter dead to rights by a mile. A double play ends it and keeps Catawba off the board. No score after a half inning. This is the Eagle Sports Network. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your electrical projects. Magaha Electric specializes in commercial, retail, manufacturing, residential, and industrial contracting needs. Magaha Electric can provide superior service, technical know-how, and realistic budgeting for any size project in a timely, cost-effective manner. Visit MagahaElectric.com for all your electrical contracting needs. Magaha Electric, your East Tennessee electrical contracting source. We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know TriLight is your home team internet provider? We're right here in Jefferson City, serving the people we know with our ultra-fast, ultra-reliable fiber broadband network. And we'd love to serve you. Learn more at TriLight.net or by calling 833-847-0824. Go Eagles! Sienna Cameron leads things off for Carson Newman here in the home half of the first inning, and she'll go to work against Savannah Beaver in the circle. And a lefty throws a fit first pitch strike on the inner half. Nothing and one to begin the at-bat. Beaver's in the circle with Brindle behind the plate. And then Catawba defensively everywhere else is pretty much the same. The 0-1. Cameron takes inside for a ball, one and one. Ballerston in left, Ting in center, and Strider in right. Tucker to third, Gallibert Gert to short, short, Carter to second, and Hale at first. Cameron bounces this ball to the first baseman, Hales. He receives it and immediately races to the first base back to get the leadoff batter, Cameron. So one up, one down for Macy Hughes. Rare lefty that Carson Newman has to contend with. Beaver deals, and Hughes takes on the outside edge for a strike, nothing in one. Beaver is two and four on the year with 25 and two-thirds innings worth of work. Her ERA sits at 6-3-6, and she's got a 1.56 whip, the 0-1. Hughes will bounce over the circle. The shortstop Gallagher charges to field in front of the second base bag, and she throws on the run in time to Hales to get out Hughes. Six to three. So quickly, two up, two down for Savannah Beaver. And sends McCauley Bailey to the plate. Bailey, a multi-hit day in game one. Two for three, but the nation's leader in runs batted in. Didn't drive in a run. First pitch to her is smacked into the alleyway in left center field. That is down for at least one base. Bailey 
rolling around second. She's rolling around first. She stands up on second with a double. A two-base hit for Macaulay Bailey, her seventh of the season. And the Eagles with a two-out base runner for Brooke Matazowski. Well, in game one, the Eagles wanted them walk-off fashion, seven to six on a walk-off error with two outs. Every run that scored in game one for Carson Newman came with two away. Brooke Matazowski stands in and takes on the outer half for a strike, nothing in one. pitch. Matazowski hats back foul and out of play. Nothing in two. The pitch. Matazowski takes a called third strike on the outer half and she takes a seat looking. So the Eagles unable to do anything with the two-out double from Macaulay Bailey. There's no score after an inning. Hales, Gallagher, Strider to the plate for the Indians when we get back after these messages. This is the Eagle Sports Network. How do you show your support for Carson Newman? Head over to ShopSeenEagles.com right now where they have all of your needs covered. From clothing to outfitting your tailgate party, whether you're hunting, fishing, or on the golf course, ShopSeeAndEagles.com is the place for you. All of your everyday essentials, from pens to phone chargers, are in one place. For the best gear in the business, visit ShopSeeAndEagles.com today. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Back at the Vicky Kazee Hollifield Softball Complex. Adam Cavalier, happy to have you on hand where the Eagles and Catawba College's Catawba Indians are deadlocked in a scoreless tie after a half inning. With Carrie Hales, Bree Gallagher, and Molly Strider to lead things off for the Indians. Gaddis pitches, and it's upstairs for a ball, one and oh. One and oh. Gaddis turns and delivers the pitch, and Hales takes off the plate away, two and oh. Riley Gaddis, 16 pitches, eight for strike. She goes back to grab the rosin bag. Carson Newman's normally pitch efficient starter. He's in a one to one ball to strike ratio. Gaddis delivers. And the 2 0 is up and in for ball three. Carson Newman's pitchers. Had issues in game one leaving the ball up. Gaddis the 3 0. Misses outside, and it's a four-pitch walk. Second straight inning, Catawba gets its leadoff batter aboard, and Macaulay Bailey out from behind home plate to have a word with her fellow freshman, Riley Gaddis. Umpire crew for game number two, Robert Lance is behind home plate. Bobby Troutman moves over to first, and Christian Cottle is at third base. Leadoff walk for Kari Hales sets the table for Bree Gallagher, who's hitting 289 this season with runners on base. No score, top of the second. Gaddis wheels and deals. It's flipped foul back to the right now to play by Gallagher. Nothing in one. Well, we've been doing a fair amount of scoreboard watching today. And that will no doubt continue as... The day goes along. UVA Wise 
trying to salvage the series over at the Silver Diamond Baseball Complex. As Gaddis wheels and deals the 0-1 to Gallagher. Swing and a bouncer to the left side of the circle. Charging die. Throws on the run to first. Not in time. Nobody covering third. Hales takes that bag. An infield single for Gallagher on a tweener to short. Nobody covering third, and Hales gets an extra bag. Really tough play for the left side of the infield to make between Gaddis, Matazowski, and Die. Nobody really had a clean look at that one. Gallagher is able to leg out the infield single, and because everybody went for the ball, third base left open, Hale snags that. Two on for the Indians with nobody out, and Strider to the plate. She's homered in her last two plate appearances, but she pops this one up left side of the infield. Die back to the outfield grass, and the shortstop makes the grab toward the outfield line to the foul line, pardon me, to retire Strider. So a much-needed pop-up for Riley Gaddis. And there's one away for the designated player, Lauren Bricky. Bricky started her first game in the order in game one. She pitched prior. And went one for two with a walk and a hit by pitch. First pitch to Bricky is taken low for a ball, and it's one and nothing. We talked about the action over at the Silver Diamond Baseball Complex. The baseball team won game one 15 to 11 over UVA wise, but the Highland Cavaliers put a five spot in the top of the first, trying to salvage the series. Gaddis, the 1 0. Off the plate away. Bailey pump fakes a throw to first. We keep Gallagher honest, and it's 2 0. Gallagher has attempted to steal three bases this season, she's done so successfully twice. Gaddis. 2-0, and, oh, and pitching. Runner on the move, here's a little flare. Holt fields at second, throws to first, not in time. Eagles unable to get the double play ball, but Gaddis gets a soft pop-up for Bricky to put out number two on the board. And now Catawba can no longer score with an out. Two away, Anaya King, the lefty slapper to the plate. No score, top of the second, but Catawba threatening with runners on the corners. Gaddis, wheels and deals, bunted up the third baseline. Manizowski fields, throws to first, not in time. Scoring his hails on the squeeze bunt. A bunt single for Anaya King. Puts the Indians in front. And Michael Graves trying to say that Hales missed home plate. Gallagher to second. King singles on the bunt. Or try, I think he was trying to say that King was out of the box. And Michael Graves is incensed. Catawba leads 1-0 off of Anaya King's bunt single. And up comes Balderston. Gaddis. Turns and pitches. Downstairs for a ball, it's 1-0. One ball, no strikes to Balderston. A 1-0 lead for Catawba here in the second. Gaddis deals. Swing and a bouncing ball, back up the box, base hit. Cameron gets the ball in from center field. Good throw to the plate to Bailey. That keeps the Indians at station to station softball. But an Indian on every bag as the lineup turns back to the top of the order for Courtney Carter. Hales walked. Gallagher an infield single to short. Back-to-back pop-ups, a King RBI squeeze and a bunt single. And now a Balderston single to the center. And it turns back, of the, back to the top of the order to Carter, who doubled the lead off the game. And she takes up and away for the ball to begin this at-bat. 
one nothing Catawba here in the top of the second. Indians threatening for more though. Back to back two out hits have extended the inning. Gaddis twirls up the 1-0. Downstairs and across the dish for ball two. In the South Atlantic Conference, Emory and Henry is upset. 19th ranked Wingate, 5-3. And Lenore Ryan has rallied to take a 5-3 lead on Anderson in the top of the seventh. The 2-0 pitch. That finds the zone at the knees for a strike, 2-1. and one. Two balls, one strike, two outs. Gaddis winds and delivers. Pitch is low to Carter, and it's three and one. Pitch out of the zone here brings in the second run of the inning. Gaddis, the three one. Downstairs, ball four. Bases loaded walk brings in the second run of the inning. And Catawba's stake to an early 2-0 lead for the catcher, Brindle. She grounded out to the circle last time up. Lefty stands in. Brindle looking for her first hit of the doubleheader. Gaddis pitches. And Brindle takes a strike on the outer half, nothing in one. Tava has scored twice in the inning off of three hits. An RBI bunt single for Anaya King. And a bases loaded walk for Courtney Carter. The low one swung on and tipped foul to the backstop. It's nothing in two. Now the Gaddis trying to recover. and two Gaddis pitches stays high for a ball one and two beautiful day here at the Vic I got you, Luke. skies are mostly cloudy but with some patches of blue poking through very pleasant afternoon for softball one and two the pitch swung on lifted into shallow center field long run for everybody it drops into Sienna Cameron who throws home Tag applied, not in time. Two runs score, and Catawba has scored four times in the top of the second. It's a two RBI single for Brendel. King and Balderston both come in. Carter moves to third. A bloop single with two outs. And Michael Graves has his lineup card out. He will make a pitching change. So Riley Gaddis will exit. Sierra Rogers will enter. Catawba up 4 nothing. RBI bunt single. Bases loaded walk. Two run single for Brendel. And the Indians up big early. Sierra Rogers comes in. We're back after these messages on the Eagle Sports Network. Dorm food got you down? Need a home cooked meal? then Lisa's Country Kitchen is for you. Lisa's Country Kitchen has been feeding Carson Newman students for 15 years. Lisa's has a family-friendly atmosphere all day long. From the morning with her $2.99 breakfast specials to dinner with Lisa's fresh, never-frozen steaks. Carson Newman students get a 10% discount with their student ID. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your electrical projects. Magaha Electric specializes in commercial, retail, manufacturing, residential, and industrial contracting needs. Magaha Electric can provide superior service, technical know-how, and realistic budgeting for any size project in a timely, cost-effective manner. Visit MagahaElectric.com for all your electrical contracting needs. Magaha Electric, your East Tennessee electrical contracting source. Gatama has scored four times in the top of the second as Tucker hacks a pitch foul down the left field line. 
And it's one and one, I believe. Didn't quite get a good look at the first pitch of the at, the at bat. Sierra Rogers is into the game. 3 1 2 ERA with a 5 and 1 record. And 33 and 2 thirds innings pitched. The 1 1. Zips low for ball two. 2 and 1. Rogers on in relief of Riley Gaddis, who didn't exactly get hit hard, but not her normal pitch efficient self. The 2 1. Popped foul by Tucker toward Davis Street. It's onto the pavement for. Strike two. I believe that is former Carson Newman catcher Carolyn Levi watching on from Davis Street. The 2 2. This is down for ball three. And the count loads up on Tucker. Second base is empty. Carter on third, Brindle on first. The Indians have scored four in the top of the second. Four runs off of five hits for Catawba in the game. Four runs off of four hits in the inning. The 3-2. Hacked foul. Back and out of play. Do it again at three balls and two strikes. Tucker flew into a double play to center field her first time up. As the Eagles were able to get the would-be go-ahead run at the plate in the first. No such luck here in the second. Four runs across all with two out for Catawba. The payoff pitch. This is down, ball four. Brindle off to second base. Base is loaded once more for Carrie Hales. All of this with two outs. First two batters reached for Catawba in this inning. Hales on a walk, Gallagher on a single to short, and we get Hales back up. Swings at the first pitch, lifts it to center field. Cameron ranging back, and she reaches up near the warning track to retire Hales. But the damage done for Catawba, 10 women head to the plate. Indians score four runs off of four hits, all with two out, and leave the bases loaded. Warder, Dye, and Holt will try to ignite a Carson Newman rally when we get back to the Vic after these messages. This is the Eagle Sports Network. At InterDigital, we strive to be a leading provider of cutting-edge digital and marketing solutions. At InterDigital, we want to help our clients find success. Our team of technology gurus work together to ensure InterDigital continues to progress forward as technology advances. At InterDigital, we make technology work for you. Visit InterDigital.com for IT support, web development, virtual tours, graphic design, internet marketing, mobile app, and film production services. InterDigital, laser focused on your success. We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know Trilight is your home team internet provider? We're right here in Jefferson City, serving the people we know with our ultra-fast, ultra-reliable fiber broadband network. And we'd love to serve you. Learn more at Trilight.net or by calling 833-847-0824. Go Eagles! Catawba has staked itself to a 4-0 lead after an inning and a half thanks to a four-run second. Catawba plates four runs all with two outs on the board. A bunt single for Anaya King, a bases loaded walk for Courtney Carter, and a two-run bloop single for Christina Brindle to center field. Now Kennedy Warder goes to work against Savannah Beaver. The lefty fires low for a ball. And it's 1-0 to begin this at-bat. Warder. Designated player for game two. Swing a foul ball back to the netting behind home plate. One and two. Warder has done the catching in every game that she has appeared this season, save for game two at Mars Hill when she was the designated player. That was on February 22nd. She went 0 for 4 that day. 1-1. Order swings at this pitch, lifts it into the right center field alleyway. A long run for King, who can't catch up with it. Warder motors into second. She's got a leadoff double. No such hitting issues for Kennedy Warder in her second career game as designated player. 
She stretches out Anaya King into the right center field alleyway. Got it, her glove to it. But on a dead sprint, that's a extra base hit for Kennedy Warder. With the leadoff batter aboard for Hayden Dye, who swings at the first pitch, bounces it over the head of Beaver in the circle. Grabbed by Gallagher at short, and the throw to first in time to put away Dye. Unproductive, too. Warder had to hold, and she stays at second. So one out, Carmen Holt to the plate. Eagles down 4 nothing in the bottom of the second. Carmen Holt. One for four in game one with the run scored. And she takes low to begin this at bat, 1-0. Holt riding a 13-game consecutive reached base streak. 1-0. Holt ducks out of the way of a pitch on the inner half of the belt for a strike. One and one. Beaver, the lefty. Left-handed starters. They've been a bit of a collector's item for Carson Newman this season. The one-one pitch. Outside for a ball, and it's two and one. Eagles two and one against left-handed starters this season. Two one Holt swings, bounces it into the hole at short. Gallagher fields, throw to first is in time. Warder delayed, takes off for third, and she's doubled up. A 6-3-5 twin killing ends the inning. And the Eagles unable to take advantage of a leadoff base runner. No runs, a hit, no errors, and nobody left. The top up 4 nothing after two. Back after this on the Eagles Sports Network. We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know Trilight is your home team internet provider? We're right here in Jefferson City, serving the people we know with our ultra-fast ultra reliable fiber broadband network and we'd love to serve you learn more at trilight.net or by calling 833-847-0824 go eagles at aramark this year we go back to our foundation at aramark we are great food and great service with great guests that is the aramark way from coffee at maples to sandwiches in stokely Aramark is here to produce high quality food for you. A foundation of fresh food, a foundation of speedy service, and a foundation that's built for you now and for the future. That is the Aramark way. Gallagher, Strider, and Brickley to lead things off for Catawba here in the top half of the third inning, leading Carson Newman four to nothing as Rogers pitches to Gallagher. Right down Broadway for a strike to begin the at-bat at nothing and one. Catawba with the four-run second. That's the difference right now. Bunt single, bases loaded, walk, two-run, bloop single to center. Rodgers, the 0-1. Flip foul to the right and out of play. Rodgers ahead in the count at nothing and two. Well, we can pass on with delight to you that Carson Newman's sprinter, Sade D'Souza, has finished fifth in the 60-meter dash at Indoor Nationals and is a first-team All-American. Go to check swing and a pitch outside, appeal into the field. Gallagher did not offer, and it's one and two. So congratulations go out to Carson Newman Track and Fields. Sade D'Souza, first-team All-America honors for her. One and two is in the turf for a ball, two and two. Hit in the air to center. Cameron Range is back behind the logo towards left center and makes the grab to retire Gallagher. So a titanic pop-up for Gallagher. And there's one away for Strider. 7.37 seconds for 
Sade D'Souza to finish fifth in the 60 meters. A hundredth of a second behind Lenore Ryan's Alexis Brown. Michaela Jackson wins the national title. First pitch to Strider is swung and a, swing and a miss. And she's behind in the count at nothing and one. Maka Charamba has finished seventh in the 60 meters, the 01. Popped in the air right side of the infield. Holt has it in her sights at second. She settles under it to retire Strider off the pop up, and there's two away. Brings up the designated player, Bricky, who popped up to second back in the second. So Maka Charamba has first team All America honors in his back pocket with his 682. In the 60s, in the 60, Isaac Bazio, first pitch to Bricky. Right down Broadway for a strike at the knees, nothing in one. Isaac Bazio of West Tex Texas A&M sets the facility record and wins the national title with a 6-6-2. Dario Maddow of Lenore Ryan finishes in the silver medal spot, 6-6-7. The 0-1, Bricky Tardy swinging. And she's behind in the count at nothing and two. Maka Charamba, his day is not done. At 540, he competes in the 200 meters where he is the top seed in that event. The 0-2. Off the plate away for a ball. It's 1-2. and two. Here at the Vic, Carson Newman softball, the 21st ranked team in the country, trails Catawba 4 to nothing. The Indians looking for their second win of the season over a nationally ranked club. They run Wold Anderson 8 nothing earlier this year. 1-2. Hit foul back and out of play. Count holds the ball and two strikes on Bricky. Carson Newman baseball trailing UVA wise 7 0 in the top of the second. Carson Newman pitching's been roughed up a little bit. Eagles already onto their third pitcher of the day, the 1 2. Poked foul to the right and out of play over the press box here on the first base side. 1 and 2. Eli Patch. Did not record an out. Gave up three hits and five runs in his start. Walked one, hit one, and gave up two home runs. Seven inning game over at the SDVC to wrap up the series. Wise trying to salvage the series and get a split today. Eagles have already won the series. The one, two. Downstairs to Bricky, and that evens the count at two balls and two strikes. Base is empty with two out, but Catawba with a 4-0 lead on Carson Newman. Thanks to a four-run second, Eagles will have to rally if they're to be successful for a sweep. The 2-2. Hit foul back and out of play. Do it again at two balls and two strikes. Eighth pitch of the at-bat coming up. Well, all of the game ones have gone final. Limestone walks off against Belmont Abbey in eight innings. The only non-conference twin bill on the docket today. Oskalum wins 8-0 at Mars Hill in game one. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swung on by Bricky. Right at Martin in left. Makes two steps back, two steps forward. And retires Bricky. So Sierra Rogers, quality effort. She faces the minimum in the third. Eagles trailing 4-0. Vandergriff, Martin, Cameron to the bat rack. When we get back after these messages. This is the Eagle Sports Network. When you're sick and tired of fast food and need a fresh home-cooked meal, turn to Lisa's Country Kitchen. Lisa's been cooking up her fresh, never-frozen food for the Lakeway area for more than 15 years. Lisa's cares about her customers. You may enter a stranger, but you'll leave a friend. From footlong hot dogs to juicy steaks, Lisa's has the best food for the best prices. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. What is it that makes you powerful? It's not only having a voice, but knowing that it's heard loud and clear. We understand knowledge can change your life and that energy will continue to power it. And because you're part of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, we're always listening. Because you're more than just a customer. You're a member. And what's more powerful than that? AEC, bringing the winning game plan to your team. 
Mary Vandergriff leads things off for Carson Newman here in the bottom of the third inning, swinging at the first pitch and grounding it to third. No trouble for Riley Tucker, who fields it before the second bounce and throws out Vandergriff at first to carry Hales, 5-3. to three. One up, one down. That brings up Abby Martin. Martin was a terror in game one. First career three-hit day, three for four at the plate with three runs scored, including the game winner. First pitch to Martin is taken at the handles for a strike, and it's nothing in one. Well, like I said before the break, most of the game one ones uh, in the softball doubleheaders around the sack have gone final today. The 0-1, strike at the handles, nothing in two. Limestone, 1-0 over Belmont Abbey. Tusculum rolls past Mars Hill, 8-0 for the Pioneers' first league win. Coker handles Wise at home, 7-2. The intri most intriguing scores, the 0-2. Martin bounces to third. Tucker scoops it up, low off the second hop, and throws on the run to get Martin. Back-to-back 5-3 putouts, and there's two away. Emory and Henry scores a win over 19th-ranked Wingate 5-3. Got out hit 9-5, but had the timely knocks to beat the Dogs and hand Wingate its first sack loss. And Newberry run rolls Lincoln Memorial 15-5. Ryan handles Anderson on the road 5-3 to three as Cameron hits the first pitch foul toward Davis Street. Nothing in one. And the game twos that are underway. Coker has jumped out to a 10-0 lead on UVA Wise. Wingate leads Emory and Henry 2-1 in the bottom of the fourth. And Tustle's out to a 1-0 lead on Mars Hill. The 0-1 pitch. Cameron stings deep into the hole at second. Retreating to field is Carter. She gets it into her glove. On the second hop and throws out Cameron at first, six to three. So Savannah Beaver does her job, gets three straight ground outs. And that's the end of the third for Carson Newman. Ground out, ground out, out into a double play. Ground out, ground out, ground out. Five straight outs recorded on ground outs for the Indians. King, Balderston, and Carter to the mat rack. Catawba with a four-nothing lead. And we get back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. Domino's Pizza in Jefferson City and Morristown wants to help feed your business. When you're hungry at lunch, show your business card at Domino's in Jefferson City and Morristown when you make your purchase for pickup or delivery to get 25% off the entire order. That's 25% off your order at Domino's in Jeff City and Morristown when you show your business card. Call 865-471-6700 to get a pizza. Domino's, the official pizza of the Carson Newman Eagles. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Anaya King leads things off for Catawba in the top of the fourth inning, taking upstairs for a ball and a 1 0 count to begin her second at bat. Pitch. It's in there for a strike, and it's 1 and 1. Anaya King. RBI bunt single her first time up. 1-1 one, one pitch. Tipped foul off of third, and it's 1-2. and two. The pitch. Taken low. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes to Anaya King. Rogers twirls the pitch. King pokes it into the right center field alleyway. That's down and rolling past Sienna Cameron. Mary Vandergriff backed it up well and keeps King to just a single. 
Second hit of the day for Anaya King. Uh, single slapped into right center. And Catawba gets its leadoff batter aboard for a third straight inning. Or for, pardon me, for a third time in four innings. So King singles to right center. And the table set for Balderston. First pitch, bunted, foul off of first, nothing in one. King has good speed. Six stolen bases on the season, has yet to be caught. And has scored 17 runs. Four nothing, Indians leading. Top of the fourth. A four run second, the difference right now. A one. Hit foul to the backstop, nothing in two. Sacrifice bunt no longer in the offing unless Balderston wants to risk the strikeout with a foul ball. Rogers back aboard the slab. She delivers the 0-2. Swung at a pitch upstairs. Popped in the air to right. Vandergriff three shuffle steps in to make the grab and retire Balderston. So routine for Mary Vandergriffen right, and there's one away as the lineup turns back to the top of the order for Courtney Carter. Carter has been productive here in the nightcap. Bases loaded, walk, and an RBI and a double. Runner on the move as Bailey throws to second. Holt has to grab it before it gets into center field. Pitch was outside for a ball, and... Kings easily into second for her seventh stolen base of the season. Actually, the home plate umpire just said, hey, that first pitch was a strike, nothing in one. Rogers deals. Downstairs for a ball, it's one and one. One ball, one strike, one out. King stands on second, looking to pat a 4-0 lead for Catawba in the top of the fourth. Rogers deals. 1-1 is hit foul to the right and out of play, 1-2. and two. And Sierra Rogers, a much stronger outing here in the nightcap. In game one, she went an inning, gave up a hit and two runs with two walks and a hit batter in starting that game. She's been better in relief here of Riley Gaddis. One, two. Hit into the hole at short. Die Fields throws to third. Matazowski gets the tag down. The lead runner, King, is retired as Carter reaches on the fielder's choice. King retired six to five, and there's two away. Slick work by Die at short to get the lead runner, King. There's two away with Carter on first and Christina Brindle to the plate. Two-run bloop single her last time up as Rogers pitches. Downstairs for ball. It's 1-0. and oh. One ball, no strikes, two outs. Never did close the book on Riley Gaddis for Carson Newman. An inning and two-thirds gave up five hits and four runs with two walks. 1-0 is upstairs for a ball, 2-0. Rodgers pitches. 2-0, stays up and in for ball three. Brindle in the driver's seat at three and nothing. After her, Riley Tucker looms. The 3-0 pitch. Taken upstairs for ball four, four-pitch walk. So the inning extends. Kataba gets a base runner back in scoring position. For Riley Tucker. Third baseman. Hitting 485. Score update from the Smith Road Complex in Newberry. Wolves out to a 6 nothing lead on LMU in the nightcap. As Tucker takes a strike on the outer half. Nothing in one. Carson Newman baseball has the bases loaded in the bottom of the second. Oh, no, they don't anymore. A base hit for the Eagles brings a run across the 
diving grab by Hughes at first. She fields it off the hop, turns to the first base bag, and retires Tucker herself. Catawba strands two. Indians, a 4 nothing lead, headed to the bottom of the fourth. Work to do with Hughes, Bailey, and Matazowski to the bat rack for Carson Newman when we get back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. I get my power from my co-op so I can put my energy into my family. Into waking up the neighborhood. Latte for Christine. I get my power from the co-op so I can put my energy into planting seeds for a brighter future. Touchstone Energy Cooperatives power to your community for your community so your energy can go into the things that matter most to you. My 69 Camaro. Who powers you? AEC, the right call for your energy needs. Let us help you score success. When you're sick and tired of fast food and need a fresh home-cooked meal, turn to Lisa's Country Kitchen. Lisa's been cooking up her fresh, never-frozen food for the Lakeway area for more than 15 years. Lisa's cares about her customers. You may enter a stranger, but you'll leave a friend. From footlong hot dogs to juicy steaks, Lisa's has the best food for the best prices. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. 4 nothing. Catawba has the lead as we come to the bottom of the fourth inning. Macy Hughes, McCauley Bailey, and Brooke Matazowski we'll try to get things cooking for Carson Newman. Eagles have two hits on the day. Both of them are doubles, one from McCauley Baby Bailey, one for Kennedy Warder. And Savannah Beaver has done a nice job keeping the Eagles off balance. The lefty hits Macy Hughes to begin this at-bat. That's something that's been at a premium for Carson Newman. Three bases. Eagles walked 15 times on Thursday against North Greenville. That's just the third free base of the day for Carson Newman. It comes against a Catawba pitching staff that has hit more batters than anybody else in the country. Beaver pitches, and Bailey ropes this one into the right center field alleyway. Riders there to cut it off and keep Bailey to a single. Hughes motors over to third, and the Eagles have runners on the corners with nobody out. Carson Newman's offense finding its groove. Brooke Matazowski comes up. Or nothing. Catawba leading, bottom of the fourth. Beaver pitches, Matazowski swings, hard hit, ground ball, too short. Throw to first is not in time, throw home is not in time. So Brooke Matazowski scores the first run of the game. On a fielder's choice, Macy Hughes scores. And Catawba head coach Brady Tiger is out of the dugout to have a, a word about the call at the plate. So Brooke Matazowski reaches on a fielder's choice. McCauley Bailey retired at second, six to four. Macy Hughes scores. And the Eagles are down three runs, four to one. Well, that was a well hit ball by Brooke Matazowski. She's the only Eagle on now, on first base. Henry Warder comes up. First pitch to hers, loop foul off of third, nothing in one. Eagles trying to rally. Hit batter, Bailey single, RBI fielder's choice from Brooke Matazowski to put the first run on the board for Carson Newman. Beaver. Twirls up the 0-1 pitch, a change up that Warder hacks foul back to the circle. Beaver Fields throw to first. No call yet. Safe. It, the throw pulls Hales off the bag. All hands are safe. An E1. The initial ruling. Matazowski to second. And 
two on for Hayden Dye, who takes the first pitch strike, nothing and one. Oh, and one to Dye. The pitch tapped foul off of Dye's legs, nothing and two. Four, one, Gautama leading. But a hit batter, a single, an RBI fielder's choice, and an E1. Have the Eagles in business with one out in the bottom of the fourth, trailing by three runs. Beaver deals. Dies, swings, and hits it foul off of her front foot. That brings her to the turf. And the count holds at 0-2. Die coming up lame after that one. And she'll head over to the third base box to have a word with head coach Michael Graves after socking herself on one of her legs. Third base umpire Christian Cottle in to make sure that Dye is okay to continue the AB. Dye ground ball out the short her first time up. Beaver deals the 0-2. It's a changeup. Low to die. Pick move to first is not in time. That's one and two. One ball, two strikes. One out. Matizowski at second. Warder at first. Eagles down three runs. Beaver pitches. And die swings and hits it foul off the facing of Catawba's dugout. And that certainly surprised whoever Katawa has keeping the book. It was a screamer. Right into the table set up on the fence in Katawa's dugout. One and two. Seventh pitch of the at-bat coming up. Guy swings and cranks it foul into Katawa's bullpen. Where I believe that's Alex Backey is warming up. Backey had to... Uh, Stopping her throwing motion to adjust to that. Seventh pitch of the at-bat coming up to Hayden Dye. Eagles trailing 4-1 in the bottom of the fourth. They have runners on first and second. Matazowski and Warder. The 1-2. Swing a line drive right to the third baseman, Tucker. Throw to second, and Carter does not get Matazowski leaning. And there's two away. So Dye lines out. And it'll be on Carmen Holt to extend the inning. One run across on an RBI fielder's choice from Brooke Matazowski after the Eagles got the first two of the inning to reach. First pitch to Holt. Swung on. Cranked foul into the bullpen area again for Kataba on the third baseline. Nothing in one. No balls. One strike. Two out. Time called for Riley Tucker to throw in the foul ball that was in Catawba's bullpen. Holt grounded into a double play her last time up. The pitch is low for a ball. It's one and one. I'll say you what, what you want about Savannah Beaver. Came in with an ERA north of 6.3. She's just given up one run today, and it's because she's thrown strikes. 37 pitches, 30 for strikes. The 1-1, one, one. off speed. Holt pulls it down the right field line. That's down for a base hit. Matazowski gets the wave around third. She scores standing as Strider's throw from right comes in up the third baseline. It's a two-out RBI single for Carmen Holt. Warder over to third. Matazowski scores. And the Eagles with an unearned run pull within two. It's 4-2. to two. Mary Vandergriff keep the line moving. Tying run on base for Carson Newman now in the bottom of the fourth with two out. Inning should be over. As Beaver pitches, Vandergriff swings. Bouncing ball into the hole at second. No trouble for Carter, who makes the routine play to first and gets Vandergriff. But the Eagles score twice. Two runs off of two hits and an error in the inning and cut the deficit in half. It's 4-2 Catawba. 
after four. Hales, Gallagher, and Strider, four, five, and six, middle of the order, due up for the Indians when we come back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. We select our insurance companies the same way you do, very carefully. When you work with us, you can count on receiving fast, courteous, and professional service and quality protection through auto owner's insurance. For a no-problem approach for your life, home, car, and business insurance needs, ask us about the no-problem company, Auto Owner's Insurance. Call Bible Insurance Agency at 423-586-4320 or go by 1600 East Andrew Johnson Highway in Morristown, serving the Lakeway area's insurance needs since 1931. At InterDigital, we strive to be a leading provider of cutting-edge digital and marketing solutions. At InterDigital, we want to help our clients find success. Our team of technology gurus work together to ensure InterDigital continues to progress forward as technology advances. At InterDigital, we make technology work for you. Visit InterDigital.com for IT support, web development, virtual tours, graphic design, internet marketing, mobile app, and film production services. InterDigital, laser focused on your success. 4-2, Catawba leads Carson Newman as we come to the top of the fifth inning. And Carrie Hales leads things off for the Indians. And Rogers' first pitch to her is a strike right down Broadway. Nothing in one. Sierra Rogers, pitch efficient here in the nightcap. 42 pitches, 27 strikes. She's two and a third innings deep into a relief outing. Walk two and giving up one hit. The 1 hit in the air to left center field. High fly ball. Abby Martin ranging into the alleyway. And she settles under it, leans to her left, and makes the grab to put away Hales. One pitch, one out. There's one away for Bree Gallagher. Gallagher is one for two today with a single and a fly out to center. Rogers deals high, hacked at, down the right field line, turning foul and out of play. It's nothing in one. One. Downstairs, one and one. Well, it can't be understated how improved Catawba is from a year ago. Eagles swept last year's doubleheader. The pitch. Swing and a line drive into the right center field. Gap, that's down for a base hit. One hops the wall. Vandergriff fields, throws into second where Die cuts it off. And that chases Gallagher back to the bag. It's a one-out single for Bree Gallagher. Good job by Vandergriff to keep her to a single. And there's one out and one on for the Indians in the top of the fifth, looking to pad the lead again down to 4-2 after the Eagles score twice in the fourth. And Molly Strider comes up. It can't be understated how improved Catawba is as Rogers deals upstairs for ball, 1-0. This was an Indians team last year that only won one game in South Atlantic Conference play. What a long year for Catawba. 1-23 in, in league play last season. As Catawba head coach Brady Tigert has his lineup card out. And I believe he will bring in a pinch runner for Gallagher at first base. And that indeed is the case. So Catawba... Will pinch run Callie Parker. At first base. So Parker running in place of Gallagher. With a 1-0 count on Strider. He takes for a strike, one and one. Pitch downstairs. Two and one. Two balls, one strike. Rogers deals. Swung on, lifted to right. 
It's over Vandergriff's head, and it's out of the park. Strider homers for the third time in the doubleheader. A two-run shot stretches the lead back to 6-2 to two in Catawba's favor. Molly Strider, eighth home run of the season. Her third of the twin bill. She homered twice in game one. She goes yard here in the nightcap. And it's back to a four-run cushion for Catawba with the designated player, Bricky, due up. Well, those were the types of moments that evaded Catawba last year. Eagles swept the doubleheader from Catawba in Salisbury. First sweep at Catawba since 2010. First pitch to Bricky is on the outer half for a strike, nothing in one. Eagles won game one, 18-0, won the night cap, 12-0, and Sierra Rogers carried a no-hit bid into the fifth of the night cap. Pitch upstairs for a ball, one and one. Catawba much improved from a year ago. They've more than tripled, and not quite haven't, they haven't more than tripled, they've almost tripled their win total from last year. Bricky fouls it to the right and out of play. It's one and two. Sitting at 14 and nine and two and three in league play. Night and day different from a team that finished last in the league a year ago. One, two. Outside for a ball, two and two to Bricky. Two balls, two strikes, one out. Catawba six and Carson Newman two here in the nightcap. Eagles walked it off with a seven, six win in game one on a walk-off error after Catawba rallied with four unanswered. The 2-2, tip foul to the backstop, 2-2. Two two. Eagles hoping they can rally here in the nightcap and sweep the twin bill. Carson Newman baseball has countered with a four-run bottom of the second and trails UVA wise 7-4 through three over at the Silver Diamond Baseball Complex. Here's the 2-2. Two two. Downstairs for ball three, and that loads the count up on Bricky. All-American track and field runs for Carson Newman today for Sade D'Souza and Maka Taramba. 60 meters, the 3-2, swung on, cranked to left. Martin back to the wall. She watches it bounce off the wall. Bricky is into second with a stand-up double. Another extra base hit for the Indians. And the inning continues for Catawba. Fly out to left, single, homer, double for Catawba here in the top of the fifth, trying to play add-on with a 6-2 lead. Six runs off of nine hits and an error for the Indians. They've left five on. Two runs, four hits, no errors, and three left on for the Eagles. Anaya King comes up. Two for two today. The lefty slapper takes on the outside edge for a strike, nothing and one. King. Bunt single to start the scoring back in the second. The pitch, swing and a miss, and she's in a nothing and two hole. Sierra Rogers. Two and two-thirds innings of relief work now. Four hits, two runs allowed. The 0-2. Downstairs for a ball. It's one and two. Eagles trying to rally. Done it a few times this season. But nothing too crazy. The pitch. Swung on, back to the circle. Rogers fields and throws to Hughes at first to put away King one to three. But productive, it moves Bricky over to third base for Savannah Balderson. Craziest comeback, well, I guess you had two. The Eagles are down four nothing to Emmanuel on February 4th in the night cap. Ended up winning seven to six in one of the weirder walk-offs that you'll see in a game that battled darkness. Alderson stands in, swings at the first pitch, and skies it foul to the right and out of play. Nothing and one. 
it was McCauley Bailey who had the winning hit in the bottom of the sixth inning to get the odd 7-6 walk-off win after trailing by four runs. And then again against Emmanuel, different day, different place. We're playing the Lions at the Bearcat Fleet invite on February 18th. Eagles trailed 4-0 after Emmanuel was perfect through five, the 0-1. Downstairs to Balderston, one and one. McCauley Bailey hit a home run to break up the perfect game, the no hitter, and the shutout. And the Eagles found themselves down 4 1 in the bottom of the seventh. The 1 1 pitch. Balderston will rip to left center field. That's down for extra bases. Balderston motoring into second. She's got a stand up double. Bricky scores easily, and the lead is a game high five for the Indians. 7-2, Catawba plays that on. And that's the end of the line for Sierra Rogers. Nicolette Ferguson is on in relief. And Catawba has a 7-2 lead here in the top of the fifth. Two out and a runner on second when we get back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your electrical projects. Magaha Electric specializes in commercial, retail, manufacturing, residential, and industrial contracting needs. Magaha Electric can provide superior service, technical know-how, and realistic budgeting for any size project in a timely, cost-effective manner. Visit MagahaElectric.com for all your electrical contracting needs. Magaha Electric, your East Tennessee electrical contracting source. We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know Trilight is your home team internet provider? We're right here in Jefferson City, serving the people we know with our ultra-fast, ultra-reliable fiber broadband network. And we'd love to serve you. Learn more at Trilight.net or by calling 833-847-0824. Go Eagles! Nico Ferguson is on in relief, the third pitcher of the day for Carson Newman's softball program. And the first batter that she faces off with is Courtney Carter. And she starts her with a ball down. 1 0. And 1 0 to Carter. So Ferguson got the win in relief. In game one, pitched two innings, gave up a hit. The hit was a home run. She'll try to limit the damage here in game two. First pitch swinging, a blooper over the head of Diet Short. Ballerston gets the wave around third. She scores standing. Carter's got a two-out single, and Catawba has stretched the advantage to eight to two. The hits just keep on coming. For the Indians, 11th knock of the day for Catawba. That brings up the catcher, Brindle. Ferguson pitches. Brindle takes low and away, gets out of Bailey's mitt. Pass ball moves Carter over to second base. Now the Balderston run is charged to... Sierra Rogers, the 1-0. Swing a hard hit, ground ball to short. Dive field since Hughes split legged at first. And she makes the out to put away Brendel. But Catawba scores four times in the top of the fifth. Indians, 8-2 leaders headed to the bottom of the fifth. Eagles with nine outs left to make up a six-run deficit. When we get back to the Vic after this on the Eagle Sports Network. How do you show your support for Carson Newman? Head over to ShopSeenEagles.com right now where they have all of your needs covered. From clothing to outfitting your tailgate party, whether you're hunting, fishing, or on the golf course, ShopSeenEagles.com is the place for you. 
all of your everyday essentials from pens to phone chargers are in one place. For the best gear in the business, visit shopseaneagles.com today. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. Call 423-585-4000 for the Carson Newman rate. Quality Suites of Morristown, the preferred hotel choice of the Eagles. 8-2, Catawba leads Carson Newman as we come to the bottom of the fifth inning, and Alex Backey is on in relief of Savannah Beaver. And I don't think Catawba head coach Brady Tigert could ask much more out of Beaver, who puts up four innings, gives up four hits, two runs, one earned. In a solid start for Catawba. Now Backy on presumably to finish the game after losing game one. The first pitch she throws to Abby. Martin is upstairs for a ball, 1-0. Martin grounded out to third her first time up today. Eagles trail by six runs, 8-2 to two in the bottom of the fifth. Backy pitches. Martin swings, stings it down the right field line. That's dropping in fair territory. Martin hard charging around first, sliding in underneath the tag. Gallagher put it to her, but Martin beat her to the bag. And it's a leadoff double for Abby Martin. Ultra aggressive base running for Martin on what I thought was just going to be an easy single down the right field line. It bounced once and Strider fielded off the first stop. But Martin never let up around first base, and she's able to slide underneath the tag applied by Gallagher at short. Leadoff double, third double of the day for Carson Newman, and now Sienna Cameron bunts foul up the third baseline with the infield back, and it's nothing and one. Well, unlucky there for Cameron as it trickles foul. Infield was positioned perfectly for her to bunt herself aboard. 0 for 2 here in the nightcap. Ground out to first, ground out to short. Backy deals. Cameron swings right at Tucker at third. She looks off Martin, keeps her at second, and throws to first in time for the Hales to get Cameron five to three. Textbook work, work by Tucker at third. And there's one away for Macy Hughes. Macy Hughes. Ground out, got plunked, scored a run. First pitch, swing and a miss, nothing in one. 8-2, Indians leading 21st ranked Catawba, in the, er, Indians leading 21st ranked Carson Newman in the bottom of the fifth. Backy, 0-1, the pitch, change up. Hughes watches it outside for a ball, 1-1. One Holly Bailey looms, two for two in the nightcap, four for five for the doubleheader, 1-1. One, one. Swung on by Hughes, ripped down the left field line, but twisting foul and one hopping the fence out of play. Ball and two strikes to Macy Hughes. Bottom of the fourth inning over at the Silver Diamond Baseball Complex. Wise still leading Carson Newman seven to four. In the series finale, Eagles have already wrapped up a series win over the Highland Cavaliers. One and two. Backy pitches in the turf, blocked by Brendel, and it's two and two. The pitch. Check swing and a pitch outside, ball three. The pitch in the turf, ball four. Macy Hughes off to first base. 
Eagles trailing Catawba 8-2, bottom of the fifth inning. But base runners for Macaulay Bailey, who has been swinging a white-hot bat. He's only been retired once in the doubleheader. Double and a single here in the nightcap. Back he pitches. Bailey hacks at the first pitch and sends it foul to the right now to play. Nothing in one. Bailey, the country's leader in RBI, at least for one more statistical day, unless she can drive in some runs here. Case and Boatner for Anderson has surpassed her with a two home run day for Anderson. The 0 1. Outside for a ball, one and one. But at least in the last official NCAA softball stats, Bailey number one. She'll slip unless she can drive in some runs here in game two. The pitch, Bailey swings at, pops it up, first base side. It stays in the park. And Bailey retired for just the second time today on a foul out to first. Two away for Brooke Matizowski. 8-2 Eagles trail in the bottom of the fifth inning. Couple base runners here in the frame for Carson Newman after a leadoff double for Abby Martin, a one-out walk for Macy Hughes. Got to score some runs here and at least make some inroads into the deficit. Matizowski takes the first pitch strike, nothing and one. Now back he enters after four innings of work for the starter, Savannah Beavers. Backy the pitch. Matazowski takes outside for a ball, one and one. And should Catawba win this game, should Backy finish it, and should this game go seven innings, Backy would be in line for a three-inning save, her first of the year. Backy, the one-one. Matazowski stings this one to center field. Back to the wall goes King. She reaches up and has to give up. Brooke Matazowski, career blast number 46. A home run to straightaway center field, and Carson Newman cuts the deficit in half. It's 8-5 in the bottom of the fifth. A two-out rip to center for Brooke Matazowski. Matazowski homers for the fifth time this season. And the Eagles have cut it to a three-run game. It brings up Kennedy Warder. First pitch to Warder, swing and a miss. Nothing and one. Now Carson Newman, after getting a leadoff double and a one-out walk, absolutely had to score some runs there in the bottom of the fifth. And they did. Three-run bottom of the fifth. The 0-1. Warder swings and misses. And she's down 0-2 in the count. Five runs in the last two innings for the Eagles. But that four-run top of the fifth, Looms large for Catawba. Backy has Warder in an 0-2 hall. She pitches. And Warder takes off the plate away for a ball, one and two. Backy. Time called for by Kennedy Warder. And hold the phone. Two thirds of an inning of work for Backy. Two hits, three runs in relief. The one two is a change up. That buckles on the outer black. Warder takes it looking. But Brooke Matazowski's two out home run cuts the deficit in half. Eagles within three runs. Nico Ferguson will try to hold it. Tucker, Hales, and Gallagher, heart of the order, due up for Catawba. When we get back after these messages, this is the Eagle Sports Network. Dorm food got you down? Need a home-cooked meal? 
then Lisa's Country Kitchen is for you. Lisa's Country Kitchen has been feeding Carson Newman students for 15 years. Lisa's has a family-friendly atmosphere all day long. From the morning with her $2.99 breakfast specials to dinner with Lisa's fresh, never-frozen steaks. Carson Newman students get a 10% discount with their student ID. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. Serving East Tennessee for 40 years, Magaha Electric is the perfect choice for all your electrical projects. Magaha Electric specializes in commercial, retail, manufacturing, residential, and industrial contracting needs. Magaha Electric can provide superior service, technical know-how, and realistic budgeting for any size project in a timely, cost-effective manner. Visit MagahaElectric.com for all your electrical contracting needs. Magaha Electric, your East Tennessee electrical contracting source. Riley Tucker stands in to go to work against Nico Ferguson, whose first pitch is in the turf for a ball to begin the at-bat 1-0. Top of the sixth inning, Catawba an 8-5 lead on Carson Newman. 1-0. Hacked high, grounded toward second. Holt Fields throw to first. Hughes goes split-legged to put away Tucker, 4-3. Tucker hit it hard, hacking at a high rise ball. But Holt makes the play deep in the hole at second to retire her. One out and hails to the plate. Walk and two flyouts. One to center, one to left for Hales. Ferguson pitches. Hales swings at the first pitch, gives it a ride into the right center field alleyway. Cameron dives and can't catch up to it. Vandergriff fields off of one bounce as Hales motors into second with a one-out stand-up double. Well, Catawba has pounded out the extra base hits today. Sixth extra base knock of the night cap for the country's sixth best team in terms of hitting doubles. And they've hit five of them here in the night cap. 12th hit of the day for Catawba. Ferguson trying to tamp the deficit at just three. Gallagher stands in and swings at the first pitch. Hard hit, ground ball, past a diving Holt at second. Rolls into center field. The wave around third. Hales scores standing. It's an RBI single for Gallagher. And Catawba stretches the lead back to four runs. 9-5 Indians in the top of the sixth. Pitch to Strider stays up for a ball. And this has been one of the harder outs for Carson Newman. Three home runs in the doubleheader for Molly Strider. Ferguson pitches. Strider takes down for a ball, 2-0. and oh. One out. Gallagher on first. Katawa has this back to a four-run cushion, 9-5 in the top of the sixth. Ferguson deals, and Strider takes a strike on the outer half, two and one. The pitch tipped foul off of third, two and two. Ferguson, set for the 2-2, she pitches, popped into the air, right side of the infield, second baseman Holt drifts back into the right field, uh, green stuff, and settles under it to grab the pop-up of Strider, two away, and the designated player, Bricky, to the bat rack, Bricky, one for three here in the nightcap, Hughes delivers the first pitch, and Bricky takes low for a ball, 1-0. Carson Newman won game one, 7-6. Katawa up 9-5 here in the nightcap. Ferguson deals, and Bricky swings and misses. It's 1-1. One one. 
Eagles have won four straight in the series. Neither team has won more than five straight in this series since the Eagles started out with a 38-2 edge for the first 26 years. There's a swing and a ground ball back to the circle. Backhand field by Ferguson. And the throw to first in time to put away Bricky, one to three. But Catawba pads its lead. A one-out RBI single for Bree Gallagher. And the Indians are back ahead four runs. Di Holt Vandergriff will try to jumpstart the Eagles offense. And we get back after these messages on the Eagles Sports Network. At InterDigital, we strive to be a leading provider of cutting-edge digital and marketing solutions. At InterDigital, we want to help our clients find success. Our team of technology gurus work together to ensure InterDigital continues to progress forward as technology advances. At InterDigital, we make technology work for you. Visit InterDigital.com for IT support, web development, virtual tours, graphic design, internet marketing, mobile app, and film production services. InterDigital, laser focused on your success. We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know Trilight is your home team internet provider? We're right here in Jefferson City, serving the people we know with our ultra-fast, ultra-reliable fiber broadband network. And we'd love to serve you. Learn more at trilight.net or by calling 833-847-0824. Go Eagles! Catawba has made another change. And the Indians have brought in a new pitcher in the form of Riley Tucker. So Tucker moves over from third base. Strider comes in from right to play third. You got Gallagher at short. Hales at first and Carter at second, so that's the same. And the new right fielder is Bricky. So they've pulled the designated player off. Hayden Dye leads things off for the Eagles. Tucker pitches low for a ball. And it's 1-0 and to Hayden Dye. One and 1-0 to Hayden Dye from Riley Tucker. The pitch hit foul to the right and out of play. It's 1-1. One and one. Riley Tucker is 0-1 this year with an 8.56 ERA. Nine innings of work. If it has given up 14 hits and 11 runs, all 11 earned. Walked six and struck out nine. He inherits a four-run lead here in the bottom of the sixth, the 1-1. On the outside edge for a strike, and it's 1-2. and two. Well, Savannah Beaver is in line to win it. The first four innings of the game. The one two pitch. Die flips it in the air to shallow right center field, sinking and landing for a base hit. Die rounds first, has to sprint back to the bag as it dropped between Bricky and Carter and King. So Hayden Dye, a bloop single to right to lead off the inning. Up comes Carmen Holt. Tucker pitches, and Holt takes low for a ball, 1-0. Oh. Well, we got about an hour and 20 minutes of game time left in this one. An hour and 20 to play two innings. Or one and a half innings, really. Tucker, the 1-0. Oh. Holt checks her swing and a pitch on the outer half, 1-1. One and one. 9-5, Catawba leading here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Nine runs off of 13 hits for the Indians. 1-1. One, one. 
Holt swings, laser beam into left center field. That's gonna roll all the way to the wall and be extra bases. Die motors into third. Holt stands up on second. She's got a double. First two of the inning reach for Carson Newman. And the Eagles have two in scoring position with Mary Vandergrift to the plate. Second hit of the day for Carmen Holt. And up comes Mary Vandergriff. 0 for 2 in the night cap. Ground outs to second and third. Tucker rocks and fires the first pitch. Vandergriff swings. Ground ball to the left side of the infield. Long look for Gallagher. Throw to first. Not in time. Die scores. Delayed moving. It's an infield single for Mary Vandergriff. Holt holds tight at second. Die scores, and it's a 9-6 ball game. Carson Newman has trimmed it back to a three-run game. And up comes Abby Martin. Tucker pitches, and Martin takes on the outside edge for a strike. Nothing in one. An infield single for Mary Vandergriff to short. Drives in Hayden Die and brings it back to a three-run game. Eagles just won't go away. Tucker pitches. Martin swings, bounces it too short. Long throw to Gallagher to first, not in time. Hales had to go airborne to get it. Martin legs out an infield single. And the Eagles have the tying run on base. As the lineup turns back to the top of the order. Hold on third, Vandergriff on second, Martin on first. Single, double, single, single to start the inning for the Eagles. And up comes Sienna Cameron, who's hitless here in the night camp. She's grounded out three times. Eagles down 9-6 here in the bottom of the sixth. Nobody out, bases loaded. Tucker pitches. Cameron swings, a little cue ball shot. Gallagher fields at short, throws the, to first to get Cameron. Holt scores. It's an RBI ground out for Sienna Cameron on a 6-3 putout. And the Eagles are down two runs with a tying run in scoring position for Macy Hughes. An RBI ground out for Sienna Cameron as Gallagher trades the out for the run. Tucker pitches. Hughes swings and hits the first pitch. Foul to the backstop. Nothing in one. 9-7. Carson Newman is within two runs. Tying run on second base for the Eagles. One out. Bottom of the sixth. Tucker. Delivers the 0-1. Hughes swings, rips this ball deep to right field. It one-hops the wall. Vandergriff scores standing. Hughes slides into second. Martin trots across home plate. This game is tied. Macy Hughes doubles to the wall in right center. And the Eagles have struck for four in the bottom of the sixth. And now up comes McCauley Bailey, but first, Brady Tigert has his lineup card out. And Tucker's day in the circle is done. So they're gonna send Strider back to right. And the new pitcher is Beaver. So Beaver re-enters. And we'll sort out all these lineup changes. Regardless, brand new game. All tied at nine here in the bottom of the sixth inning here on the Eagles Sports Network. 
We love to cheer for our home teams, like the Eagles. It means more when we're rooting for the people we know. Did you know Trilight is your home team internet provider? We're right here in Jefferson City, serving the people we know with our ultra-fast, ultra-reliable fiber broadband network. And we'd love to serve you. Learn more at trilight.net or by calling 833-847-0824. Go Eagles! All right, defensive changes. Tucker goes back to third after giving up five hits and four runs in a third of an inning of relief work. Strider goes back to right, and now Savannah Beaver retakes the circle, and her first pitch to McCauley Bailey is fouled to the left. It's nothing in one. One out, bottom of the sixth. Eagles have scored four times. Macy Hughes, a double to right center, ties the game at nine in a crazy contest here at the Vic. Beaver, she started this game. The 0-1 in the, in the turf. Hughes got a great jump and a great read, and she steals third base. One and one to McCauley Bailey. Go ahead, run 60 feet away. Outfield back on the country's leader and runs batted in. Beaver twirls up the 1-1. Bailey swings, deep fly ball down the left field line. It stays in fair territory. Baldiston makes the grab, tagging and scoring from third is Macy Hughes. A nation's leading fifth sacrifice fly for the country's leader in RBI. McCauley Bailey has put Carson Newman in front with a sack fly. It's a five-run bottom of the sixth for the Eagles, and now Brooke Matazowski steps in with a 10-9 lead. Beaver pitches. Matazowski swings at the first pitch. Skies it down the right field line. It stays in fair ground, and the second baseman, Carter, grabs the pop-up to put away Matazowski. But the Eagles score five times in the bottom of the sixth, and Carson Newman carries a 10-9 lead to the seventh. King, Balderston, and Carter will try to ignite a Catawba rally, who trails for the first time today. We're back after this on the Eagle Sports Network. When you're sick and tired of fast food and need a fresh home-cooked meal, turn to Lisa's Country Kitchen. Lisa's been cooking up her fresh, never-frozen food for the Lakeway area for more than 15 years. Lisa's cares about her customers. You may enter a stranger, but you'll leave a friend. From foot-long hot dogs to juicy steaks, Lisa's has the best food for the best prices. Lisa's Country Kitchen on Route 92 off Old Andrew Johnson Highway. The best food for the best prices. What is it that makes you powerful? It's not only having a voice, but knowing that it's heard loud and clear. We understand knowledge can change your life and that energy will continue to power it. And because you're part of a Touchstone Energy Cooperative, we're always listening. Because you're more than just a customer. You're a member. And what's more powerful than that? AEC, bringing the winning game plan to your team. Carson Newman has rallied from a six-run deficit to grab a 10-9 lead here in the top of the seventh inning. Catawba with three outs to get across a run. King stands in, taking low for a ball to begin the at-bat at 1-0. and oh. Nico Ferguson, an inning and a third of relief. Three hits and a run given up. She won game one, the 1-0. Taken for a strike at the belt, it's one and one. Riley Tucker, third of an inning, disastrous in relief for the Indians. Five hits, five runs, gave up two doubles. One one, swing and a miss. King way out in front, one and two. Tucker in line to lose it for Catawba. Ferguson, the one-two pitch. Chopped up the first baseline. Ferguson fields underhand, flip to first, not in time. 
King legs out an infield single. Just a little nipper up the first baseline, and Catawba has the tying run on base. And Michael Graves pleading his case with home plate umpire Robert Lance saying that King should be ruled out of the box on that hit. So Katawa has the tying run on board, top of the seventh inning. Eagles have scored all 10 of their runs over the last three frames as Balderston stands in. Two for three on the day, and she's driven in two runs. Ferguson pitches in the turf for a ball. Warder blocked, but taking off was King, who got a great read and steals her ninth bag of the season. One and zero oh to Balderston. The pitch in there for a strike. One and one. Tying run in scoring position now for Catawba. After King got the great read on a pitch in the turf. Ferguson the one one swing and a miss. Balderston out in front and it's one and two. One ball, two strikes to Balderston. Ferguson, the pitch. Swing and a miss and a pitch down. Water keeps it in her mitt. And Balderston whiffs. One away. Lineup turns back to the top of the order for Courtney Carter. Eagles trailed eight to two after the top of the fifth. They lead 10-9 now on the top of the seventh. Time called. Sort things out. Bottom of the sixth inning. Eagles with the tying run on base over at the Silver Diamond Baseball Complex, trailing UVA wide seven to five. Eagles pitch to Carter. Change up. In there for a strike at the knees, nothing and one. No balls, one strike, one out. A 10-9 lead for Carson Newman in the top of the seventh inning. Well, it's been at least entertaining softball here at the Vic today, the 0-1. This is outside for a ball, it's one and one. One ball, one strike, one out. Tying run on second for Catawba. Here in the top of the seventh inning. Should the Eagles bat, they'll have Warder, Die, and Holt do up. The 1-1. One -one. Don't know where that one missed. Looked like it was on the outer half at the belt, 2-1. Two, two balls, one strike, a one out. King with speed on second. Ferguson twirls up the 2-1 pitch. Downstairs for ball three. After Carter, you get Brindle, who's one for three today. Ferguson deals the 3-1 pitch. Swing a bouncing ball to short. Die fields cleanly, low throw to first, scooped by Hughes. And Carter retired six to three. Die able to keep King at second, and there's two away. Catawba looking for a hit from Brindle. Brindle climbs in. Left hand batter, right hand pitcher. Ferguson, first pitch. Taken for a strike on the outer half. It's nothing in one. Brindle has grounded out to the circle. She's walked, and she's grounded out to short. Her lone hit in game two was a two-run double, or two-run single, pardon me, back in the second. Nothing in one. Ferguson pitching. It's a changeup. Bounce to the right side of the circle. Holt charges. Underhand flip to first. In time. A comeback for the ages. Eagles rally from six runs down and sweep the twin bill with a 10-9 win in the nightcap. Macaulay Bailey 
with the go-ahead sacrifice fly to cap a five-run bottom of the sixth to complete the comeback and get the Eagles two wins on the day. Insane finish for Carson Newman. The Eagles score 10 runs over the final three innings to pick up the 10-9 win. Carson Newman improves to 21-5 on the year, 6-2 in South Atlantic Conference play, while Catawba falls to 14-10 and 2-4 and and in league action. Nicolette Ferguson gets both wins on the day, both in relief as Tucker takes the loss for Catawba to fall to 0-2. Eagles are back in action on Tuesday at UVA Wise from Cavalier Field. And the next home game takes place on Saturday, a week from today, against the Newberry Wolves at 1 p.m. The final score from the Vic, Carson Newman 10, Catawba 9. Eagles erase a six-run deficit to prevail and sweep the doubleheader 10-9 in the nightcap. For our entire crew, Rick Gentahome, our camera operator, Danny Wazorek, who is directing, running replay, and running graphics, and Caitlin Jones on PA, music, and scoreboard. I'm Adam Cavalier. Thanks for joining us. Eagles take two from the Indians. They've won five straight in the series against Catawba. Until next time, thanks for joining us. This is the Eagles Sports Network.